If you've ever wondered how you can take something from one side of an image and move it to the other side of the image and balance that color perfectly, this is the tutorial for you. We are going to do that with a selective color adjustment layer and a curves adjustment layer and decide which one is best and which one is going to get us the most color accurate. One of the most difficult things to do in any kind of composite or work in Photoshop is matching colors. And sometimes matching colors can be done with hue saturation adjustment layers, selective color adjustment layers, curves, but where do you start? How do you, how do you choose which one is going to be the right one? Well, what I've noticed is that with most things, the curve is the first place to start because we need something that's going to be a power lifter that is going to move and manipulate the actual channel color of the area that we're working with. It'll make a whole lot more sense if we dive in. So check this out. On this side of the beautiful carbide and carbon building in Chicago, we have this little dash mark. Now this dash mark that you see here is actually supposed to be over here too. Don't know how it fell off or when it fell off. Don't live in Chicago, but I do know from researching online that that should be over there. So to balance this composition better, I'm gonna move this over to this side of the image. But what you will notice is that this side is maybe a little bit lighter or with a different color than this side over here. Now I'm at the end of my composition. I've already built this, I've already done all the work that I wanted to do on it, and then I realized, oh crap, I need to move that over. I would've been a little bit better if I did this at the beginning, but it gives us a good opportunity to move that to the other side and color match it perfectly. And while we're on the topic of balance, if you want to see how I balance this image perfectly with ruler precision in Photoshop, you have to watch the video that you see in the description below. I'll also post it at the end of this video if you want to click on it when we get there. So let's do this. Let's, so let's go ahead and press control and spacebar or command and spacebar on a Mac and we'll hold those while we click and drag with our mouse. And then that will show me this really close up of this guy right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a little circle around here, just a little marquee circle and grab more than I need to. This is always important to grab more than you need to. And you might think, well, Blake, why don't you just grab the dash and not the stuff around it? Well, I could grab just the dash and move it to the other side, but it, there is some color composition that needs to be balanced even on the dash if it was to be on the other side. So what I need is that data and that information that is around it as well. So I'm gonna press Command or Control J to duplicate it. Then I'll press Command or Control T, and that will get me into free transform mode. Now I'll right click inside of here and say, flip horizontal, and then enter. So now I've got it reversed. Let's press control and spacebar again, right click, fit on screen. Now we need to move this guy over to this side. So I'm gonna press V for the move tool. I'm gonna press and hold shift. That will make sure that I maintain a straight line as I move this over so it goes right across the side. And it looks like it's not even actually perfect. It might be that I have this not as precision balance as I thought I did, or the building could be a little bit off. I think the building's off. <laughs> but we need to get this exactly where it needs to go. So I'm gonna turn the eyeball off of this. And if you look right here, it looks like we have two little dots where this was probably put in, whether that was with pegs or with nails or screws or whatever that might've been. So I'm gonna turn this back on. I'm gonna drop the opacity on this to about 50% or lower. Then I can move this right to where I think it would've been nailed in because if you are a craftsman, it'd probably be right about there. Where we're gonna have even on both sides and then enter. Now, when we increase the opacity back up, look at what we see. We see that this circle right here is showing us the tonal value and the color value of what's happening on the opposite side of the image. And as I said, I probably could very easily have just made a selection around this and, and tried to make it fit exactly as it should without having anything around it. But it's really important that when you grab something from one side and pull it to the other side, it's not always going to be perfect. So this is gonna teach you how to make it perfect. This is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna add another circle here. I can actually use a rectangle because it'll be easier to balance. I'm just gonna make a rectangle right here just like this, a rectangular selection just like this and I'm gonna go into the HSL adjustment layer, and I'm gonna bring the saturation way up. Not so far up that it gets like this, but up enough that I can see some color in the background and how this needs to match that color in the background. All this HSL adjustment layer is doing for me right now is acting as a placeholder for me to see the color because it's very hard to see that there is blue in this image unless you are really, in tune with color in your photographs. You might think that this is just a gray, but as we increase that, that saturation, we start to see what colors actually exist there. Now we can do some of the fun stuff. 
So we're gonna click on this layer right here. We need to make a curves adjustment layer. I specifically wanna use a curve because what I need to do is I need to change and alter all of the color data and information that is in this right here. Now I can't just use an HSL for that. I can't use a selective color adjustment layer for that. I might be able to use selective color for that, but I think that the best tool for this is going to be the curves adjustment layer. So let's put a curves adjustment layer on here. Now we don't want this curve to be freestanding by itself because if it is, everything we do to this curve is going to affect the entire image. That's where we press and hold Alt or Option and we wait for that little arrow, that little down arrow with the square to appear and we click that. That says, hey, this curve, you can only affect what is happening in this layer below. So now we move this up and down, it's only affecting that little guy right there. So the first thing I wanna do here is just get the tonal value kind of set. Now, I don't know exactly what it's gonna be, but it appears to be a little bit darker. So I will move this down right in that mid-tone value to make it a little bit darker. Now we need to go into the curves that nobody likes to go into. That is the R, G, and B curves. The curves, the color curves that people typically don't spend a whole lot of time in. That's where we're gonna make this happen. So I'm gonna go into the blue curve first because I know for a fact that I need to make this more blue. Just by looking at this, because of that HSL adjustment layer, I know that I need to make that guy more blue. So what I'm gonna do is in this blue curve, I'm gonna go ahead and move this right here in this bottom corner. This bottom corner, if we move it this way, it's gonna get more yellow. If we move it up, it's going to get more blue. This is changing the entire basically uh, color content of that at the channel level. We're basically modifying these channels with the curve so that this area gets more blue. Now, as I move the blue up, I can move this blue up all day long. What I'm seeing though, is that there are other colors that are in there because I can't match this perfectly. So I need to kind of look at that and say, well, hmm, what color could that be? It looks like there might be a little bit of magenta in there maybe, or maybe even a little bit of red. So in that case, I need to go into the red curve. Now, if I move it up, that is going to make that more red. But if I move it to the right, it's going to make it more cyan. And as I make that more cyan, you start to see, huh, it looks like it could almost be perfect, but what color is present there that needs to go away? It looks like it might be green. So now let's go into the green curve. And in the green curve, if I move this up, it's gonna make it more green. But if I move it to the right, it's gonna do the opposite of the color wheel and make it more magenta. And there, I'm almost perfect. I've almost got this dialed in perfect to get that to, to match. So let's go back over into the blue one and see if I can do a little bit more tweaking with this to make it just right, maybe a little less blue. And I'm moving ever so slightly. I'm not moving very much here, just very, very delicately. And let's go back into red and see if maybe it's in the red. It looks like it is in the red a little bit. Now, looking at this, it is almost perfect almost perfect. And the typical viewer wouldn't even notice. So let's turn our curve off. That's how much we got the color correction perfect on this one. And let's turn the HSL off because that's gonna help us visualize how we have that on the tonal value there, okay? So now what I need to do is just add a mask on here. And then with a very soft edged brush, I mean, use a soft edge brush and pressure sensitivity to very delicately come in here and just slowly blend this in with my brush tool and just kind of, I tend to use like uneven patterns when I do this just to kind of mimic and replicate what we might see if we were actually there. Okay, and that looks about right. Oh my gosh. All right, so let's turn that curve off, turn that curve on. I think it's much better with that curve on. And you might say, Blake, that's being very nitpicky. But I will tell you this, that if you don't know how to use the curves that way, there's gonna come a time when you're like, man, I really am struggling trying to get this to match. And if you try to use the wrong tool, it's just not gonna work. That was using the curve. Let's try using something that we know will not work, okay? So we'll turn on the HSL adjustment layer here. Let's try to put on an HSL adjustment layer and see if we can get this close. So we'll press Alt or Option so we can make sure that this HSL is only affecting this guy right here. Now I turned the mask off on this because I need to see that circle there. So we could come in here and we could say, okay, well, let's, uh, let's alter the hue of this. Well, that kind of works if we make that a little bit more on the blue side, make it a little bit darker. I mean, that kind of works. We're really pushing here to try and change the master of all the colors that are there. But then you'd have to go in and say, well, okay, what is this color right here? Okay, that's the blues. Well, let's try and increase that saturation. You see, we're, we're getting it kind of close, but it's just not right there. It's just not the right tool for this because what we're trying to do is we're trying to change the 
hue, the saturation, or the luminance of that data and not the actual color that is present within there. We're trying to go into the color and, and change the color properties. We're not trying to change the channel properties of the data that is there. That's why the curve is definitely more beneficial for this. Let's try another one. Let's try a selective color adjustment layer. Now, before I begin, I need to press Alt or Option, and I need to put this into that layer. So we go into the neutrals. We need to say here, we need to, we're working with tonal value that needs to get color. So if I go into the neutrals, I can take some of the yellow out of those neutrals by making them a little bit more blue, and then go into the magenta and maybe take a little bit of the magenta out to make it a little bit more green, and then come into the cyan and make it a little bit more cyan, maybe a little bit more blue, and then possibly even a little bit darker. Now here we are actually getting into there pretty well and we're working this out. I think we can actually probably use the selective color adjustment layer for this as well. I just think that the finagling with these sliders is gonna be a little bit more than we care to than what we would do with something like the uh, curves adjustment layer, okay? So that looks pretty good in those neutrals. Now we can go into the blacks and we can say, okay, well, let's make the blacks a little bit more on the blue side, make it make it a little bit more on the magenta side. And then let's take some of the red out of there and make them a little bit more cyan. Again, we just have to push and pull with these sliders a little bit too much than I care to. And then we'll come down here and change the whites. And then the whites, let's go ahead and make them a little bit more on the darker side, maybe a little bit more on the bluer side, a little bit more on the magenta side. And that's really only affecting our little uh, guy right there. So actually I'm going to zero all that out. I don't really like what's going on at all with the white. So is, is the neutrals and the blacks are what we could have used to control it. Now, how well did it work? Let's do this. Let's zero all that out and we'll turn off our uh, HSL adjustment layer. And then if we press and hold shift and turn off our mask or turn it back on. That actually does a pretty good job of blending as well. So I would say it's a good tie between the selective color adjustment layer and the curves adjustment layer. But if I'm really a betting man here, I'd say we got there faster with curves and it was a little bit easier to understand. Here's a quick tip for you too. After you turn off this HSL adjustment layer, which is really only here to help us dial in the color correctly. After you turn this off, you might notice that this is a little bit lighter. And that might be because as this color got increased, it got a little bit darker. So one thing you'll have to do here after you get that dialed in is just come in here on your blacks and just slightly increase the darkness in there just to get it to match even better. You may also notice that after you turn off that HSL, you see that the curve doesn't exactly match perfectly either. You can either come in here to try and make this a little bit darker or further refine those RGB curves. Here we might have a little bit too much cyan, so we can come and bring this over here just a little bit. And that looks about right. Maybe it's even in the blues. Come over to the blues and get that dialed in. So it's all just about. And if anything, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but it's better than it was. The mask that we use here is really going to help us blend that in even better. So it doesn't have to be 100%, but it close enough to fool the eye. What we're doing here relies very strongly on color theory and understanding the color wheel. I'm pushing and pulling from the reds and the cyans because I know that they're opposites on the color wheel. I'm pushing and pulling from the blues to the yellows because I know that they're opposites on the color wheel. So when I see a color that's just not right, I can offset that by moving it in the opposite direction or subdue that color by moving it in the opposite direction. In this case, we could use the curve pretty equally to the selective color adjustment layer. But I feel that the selective color adjustment layer requires a little bit too much knowledge on color theory, where it's just a little bit easier with the curves adjustment layer. But putting that mask in there and blending in makes it perfect. With anything in Photoshop, it might not be done with one tool. It might need two tools. But more importantly, it's going to need this. And you're going to need to know what to use and when to use it. So doing experiments like this and showing you why these tools are better is only going to help you fill your toolkit with the tools that you need. And again, if you wanna see how I balance this with precision using rulers, go ahead and click on this video tutorial here. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop, make them seemingly simple so you can use them in your workflow today.